excited to be here with you and worship the Lord together today. And we've got an excited group this morning. Are you all ready to praise the Lord today? Hallelujah. Amen. Well, just join me in prayer if you would. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We thank you for the opportunity to serve you, to worship you, to praise you, God. We open up our hearts and our mouths to give you all glory and praise today. I declare that you're our King, our Lord, you're our Savior, you're our God. You are the God above all gods. You are not a God that takes pleasure in wickedness, nor does evil dwell with you, Lord. So I command all evil to depart this place right now in Jesus' name. I bind any spirits not of God around here, and I cast them out and declare you have no place and no power and no authority in this service in Jesus' name. I pray, God, for release of your anointing, your grace, your presence to be amongst us. Lord, the foundation of your throne is justice and righteousness. Your word says that you bless the righteous with favor as with a shield. So we thank you, God, for your presence, your favor. I might declare you are Jehovah Jireh. You're our provider. You're Al Shaddai. You're our supplier. You're Lord Sabaoth. You're the Lord of the battle. You fight all battles on our behalf. You're victorious, Lord. We give you all the praise and honor and glory today. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And I thank you for the opportunity to come before you. We give you all the praise and glory. Come on, church. Let's just give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. we 
are going to blow and the waters of tribulation are coming because the Lord says I'm going to prove out my true church. I want to know that I have a church that is planted that is here for the whatever comes they are prepared and the Lord says do not be afraid have no fear for I will be with you in every part of the journey as we go forth that it is a time when I must bring my times of judgment against those who are just playing the game of church but the Lord says those that are planted and rooted in me I truly will take them through to the other side and the glory will rest upon those that are truly sold out to me saith the Lord my time is here it is my time to see my church to see my resurrected powerful sold out church this is the time, so be ready. The times are coming, the times are here, saith the Lord. Amen. Glory. Come on, glory. Yeah, let's give him glory. Listen. that are belong to me, that are my true church, that live and have their being in me, live, move, and have my being. You've been looking forward to this time. You've been looking for more to see in my glory, saith the Lord. It is the time for us to see the demonstration. We're not a wimpy church. Say, we're not a wimpy church. to be blessed and rise up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to close this portion of the service of praise and worship 
just with an expression of glory to the Lord by just giving him a hand clap. Come on, let's just give him a hand clap. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory. We give you all the glory. Amen. You may be seated. My name is Phil Son. I'm one of the elders here at Life Center. On behalf of Dr. Buddy and Dr. Mary Crum, I want to welcome you to Life Center this morning, whether you're joining us here in the sanctuary or over the internet. We're excited that you're here, and I extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you. We're excited to be worshiping together as one body this morning. And my belief is that God has a special word for you today that you would come in get refreshed, get encouraged, that you experience the Lord in a special way so that you'll leave impacted in a different way than what you came in today. And we always have visitors here, so I just want to take a moment and recognize those of you that may be visiting with us for the very first time. If this is your first time here, would you please raise your hand? We just want to recognize you. Come on, church. And I would like the church family to get up and welcome you. It's our desire to greet you and get to know you. And church, also, I want you to take a moment and welcome your brothers and sisters sitting next to you today. We're all here together as one body. And let's just share an expression of God's love together. Greet your neighbor, greet your friend, greet one another. Hallelujah. It's great to be together today. Amen. A wonderful time in the Christian faith as we prepare for the resurrection celebration of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ coming up next Sunday. So please be seated. And those of you that are visiting with us for the first time, you're going to find in the seat pocket in front of you a little card. And this is a welcome card. If you would please just fill it out. We would like to get a record of your attendance. And on the back of it is a prayer request. If you've got any prayer requests at all, we encourage you to fill that out. Our staff prays over these prayer requests, and we want to be in agreement with you for any prayer needs that you may have. And at the end of the service, we have a welcome center, which is right outside the door and to your left. And that's where our senior leaders will be after the service. We'd love the opportunity to meet you, to greet you, to answer any questions that you have, pray with you and just to get to know you a little bit. So those that are visiting with us, please bring this card with you, and that will be your pass to get into the Welcome Center. So at this time, we are privileged to be able to continue serving the Lord with our tithes and offerings. Hallelujah, because we know that God is our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He provides for all of our needs, so it's great to be able to give back to him with a joyful heart. And I'm going to ask Pastor Samuel to come up and lead this part of the service. Pastor Samuel. How many free people we got in the house today? That's what I'm talking about. For anybody that might be bound, you've stepped into a supernatural environment. Hallelujah with a God that breaks every rule in order to do what he needs to do, is here. We are in a strategic moment, actually, in the history of, of the calendar when we look at where we are. This was the beginning of Holy Week. When we found Jesus in the scriptures, specifically in Matthew, he was sitting in a house that he was not supposed to be sitting in. He was in the leper's house. So if you know anything about Jewish custom, he's not even supposed to touch the leper, but he had already healed him. So he had already broken one rule by touching him to make sure that he could bring forth what he promised he would bring in the earth. And then you see another unusual thing that as he's sitting in the leper's house, he has the testimony of Lazarus sitting right beside him. The testimony of resurrection power sitting there in the face of every religious demon that did not want the manifestation of that to happen. And then you see a strategic moment where a woman who should not have even come close to him because of her past found entryway through the door, which is Jesus Christ, to break open an offering that there is testimony of sealed today because the Bible says wherever the gospel is preached, this offering that she has laid upon my head and upon my feet has prepared me for my burial and she will receive the reward of her gift and her offering. 
I say this to you because we're into a supernatural moment where the heavens are stirred to break every rule that needs to be broken so that the sovereignty of God can be manifested in your life. So if you need a miracle, set your faith. If you need breakthrough, set your faith. If you need to be delivered today, set your faith. Because God is coming in this room to do unusual things to bring you into the very promise that he said he will bring you into. I don't care what you're looking at. I don't care what demon is manifesting. I don't care what's talking in your ear. The sovereign God, the ruler of all creation, is saying that I'm here to do an unusual thing. Thank you, Lord. So we're setting our faith. Hallelujah. To break open an unusual seed so that God can do an unusual thing that would go down generations. We don't know how many generations are beyond what Mary and Bethany has received, but her testimony is yet still in the earth. Her children's 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 children seeing the harvest of this thing. I'm stirred in my spirit because I feel the winds of faith blowing. Trying to resurrect your faith to a place to believe him all over again for the breakthrough. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you that as we prepare our hearts to give, you're unlocking keys and you're giving us access to a place of faith that we've never received before. We thank you that we're stepping into the abundance that heaven has for us and we will see unprecedented moves of your mighty hand because we are yours. Hallelujah. There is an offering envelope in the seat pocket in front of you. We want you to take that out to be accountable for your gift. We believe in the power of God answering and responding to your faith. So if you want to give via cash, we just ask that you take out the envelope, fill out your name, your email address, check the cash box and put it in there. We'll take care of it. Thank you, Lord. If you want to give via check, we ask that you make it payable to Life Center Ministries. Use the memo section to say what your gift is for. If you want to give via credit card, we ask for your name, your address, your uh, three-digit security code, your expiration date card number, all of that information. We need all of that to process your gift effectively. If you want to give via text, send Life Center GA, all one word, to 77977. You'll receive a link to PushPay where you'll be able to give all of your information there. For those tuning in online, we celebrate you. We believe that the power of God is going to reach right into where you are. And whatever situation you need God to respond in, he's going to break you in to the freedom that he has prepared for you today. If you want to give via the app, please make sure it's the right app given to the right church how many people have given to the capital campaign already hallelujah let's do something by faith today if you have not done anything yet let's stretch today and let's give and let's make some inroads on this amount that we're shooting for this goal let's make make sure that we're able to knock it down week by week that we see a forward progression the kiosk is in the back for you if you want to give back there and you'll be able to process your gift effectively let's stand and let's decree the blessings of the lord over this gift as we read our declaration thank you father hallelujah let's read we declare that we were made in the image and likeness of god to live an abundant life in him we choose to put on the mind of Christ and declare that we are full of divine wisdom for innovation, witty inventions, and creative ideas. We free ourselves from every limitation that would keep us from bearing much fruit. We declare favor on our jobs for promotions and advancements, divine increase to our businesses, homes, families, resources, bank accounts, ministry endeavors, and investments. We will purchase property and acquire land debt-free for kingdom purposes. We will have more than enough to live a debt-free life and to be able to bless others out of our overflow. We will demonstrate the kingdom of God everywhere that we go because we were made for more in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship with the praise and worship team as you give your offering.
amazing worship team. Wasn't that fabulous, church? Let's just give them a hand clap. They were great this morning. Amen. It's exciting to be part of what God is doing. He's doing some amazing things here at the Life Center. And our focus is to equip you and build you as leaders. And as part of that, we have a full schedule of activities. So I ask you to, to focus your attention on the screens and take a look at our announcements this morning. Thank you. of Miracles, taught by Elder Catherine Sykes. Believe with expectancy to see the supernatural manifestation of God's anointing. This power is for you. Come attend this power-packed, interactive, introductory school and have your faith turbocharged to see miracles flow whenever a need is present. Topics covered. God's will to heal the kingdom of God and miracles, prayer protocol for miracles, operating in God's miracle working power, creative miracles, miracles activation and demonstration. For more information, visit lifecenter.org. of the night when sound sleep falls on man when they slumber in their beds he opens their ears dreams and visions they're god's love language power, creative miracles, miracles activation and demonstration. For more information, visit lifecenter.org. Hallelujah. How many people are excited about our Envision Conference this year? How many dreamers, seers, and discerners do we have in the room? Lift your hands high. Amen. Well, as you know, we will be hosting a very robust group of leaders that will be speaking here today, or speaking here this year for our conference. And uh, we'll be hosting Dr. James Gall, who is very proficient in teaching on the spirit of discernment, of understanding dreams, as well as operating as a seer. We have Apostle Jane Hammond, who is extremely, extremely proficient in the ability to decode masterfully dreams as she tells stories to walk you through what your dream means. And then we have Sandy Freed, the little fireball prophet herself, power-packed woman of God, who 
is a modern day Joseph and has the ability to interpret dreams in a very strategic way. And so this, this dream, dreamers, seers, and discerners conference is for the entire body at large. We want everybody here. A dream can unlock your destiny. It can actually change and shift a nation. If you ask Joseph, you will see throughout the story of his life, how dreams shifted an entire nation and set him up for strategic promotion for him to walk in the things of God. So we have some specials. Amen. Everybody say specials. Special. Amen. So we have also with our labs, though, I don't want to forget our very own. We have a very strong group of prophets. Amen. Our very own Prophet Catherine Sykes, Prophet Pat Fraley, and Dr. Hope Eady, who will be teaching in our conference labs. We are excited about each one of their labs. They're going to be amazing. But we have some opportunities for you to take full advantage of this conference. So from today until May 25th, we are having a flash sale. Somebody say two for 135. Regular price for the conference is $89 a person, but if you get with somebody and you link up, you get two for 135. It's a savings of $21.50. That is a couple of meals here in Atlanta for somebody who wants to go eat lunch, amen. You're able to go do that. So we want you to take advantage of that. Also, we have released our group rate, and our group rate is $55 for groups of five. Now, y'all waited to the last minute last time, and I had to get up here and quarantine groups. We're not going to do that this year, all right? We have a table set up right outside on the left-hand side of the sanctuary. As soon as you exit the main doors, there will be somebody there to receive you to make sure that you're able to sign up and be early. Understand that this impartation is for this house. How many people want to have their dreams and visions understood, decoded, but also want to see, have their ability to see taken to another level? Amen. I remember... James Gall gave a testimony when he was talking about Lou Engle, who could not uh, dream. He couldn't dream. He just, it was an issue. He wasn't having dreams. And so after they were at the call and praying for hours and hours and hours and hours, James Gall laid hands on him. And he said, he's sitting there laying hands on him and praying. And then all of a sudden, the weep of the Lord comes on him. And he's crying and he's snotting and it's falling right on top of Lou Engle's head. <laughs> Yeah, a little graphic and a little messy. But the thing that this man who has been dedicated to intercession for the better part of 40 years of his life who could not dream, that after that encounter with the Lord and that time of impartation, he's been dreaming very vividly ever since. So God has the ability to unlock your, your ability to dream and to move into your next level of seeing and have knowledge and understanding of what it is that you're paying attention to because it's no good to have a dream and not know what it means. Amen. So we want you to register in the foyer. You can go also to Envision19.com. If you don't want to go out there, you want to register online. For those who are tuning in online, you can go to Envision19.com and you'll be able to register, take advantage of the flash sale as well as the group rate. So people, make sure that you get together and lock that in so you can get registered early and you can get your space. How many people are going to go and take care of that today? I just saw like five hands. All right. Saints, y'all got to do better. Amen. Love y'all, but we got to make this happen. All right. So let's register. Let's make it happen early. You want to make sure that you're here and you have a seat in the place. It's going to be a dynamic conference that is going to set you up for your future as the abilities of God begin to open up in your life in a whole new way. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Samuel. Before I release our children, uh, I just want to ask Elder Tani Morris to raise her hand. Stand up. Elder Tani is over our teens. She does a fabulous job with our teens. Let's just recognize her and thank her for all the work she does. And who are our teens in the house this morning? Let's just see all the teens raise their hand. Yeah. All right, teens. There we go. Yeah. So this morning, uh, we've got a special thing going on for the teens. If you're a parent of a teen, Elder Tawny needs you to come to the teen class this morning for the first 10 minutes. So when the children are released, parents of teens, please go down, at least one parent go down with your teens um, just for 10 minutes. Elder Tawny needs you there, right? Okay, great, thank you. So we've got uh, a nursery for our children ages one through three, which is right outside the door to the right. Pre-K through first grade is in room 206, which is upstairs, second through fifth grade. 
also upstairs, room 202. And teens, which is 6th through 12th grade, are going to be in the social hall downstairs. So your release at this time, one parent for the teens, please go with your teen now for the first 10 minutes. Thank you. So this morning, we have a special speaker, and I'm going to introduce the speaker who's going to introduce the speaker. So I want to welcome Pastor Mary to please come up and introduce our speaker this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you. Wow. You, must, you may be seated. A standing ovation for somebody who's going to introduce the real deal. <laughs> Amen. I would just want to remind y'all, how, how important is the name of Jesus to you? Because Jesus is the name that saves. Jesus is the name that begins to shake the heavenlies. Jesus is our salvation. And at that name, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. And you know how he was named? In a dream. Dreams are important. I didn't get to see, how many of you plan to come to Envision Conference? Hold them high now so I can see. Great. All right, good, that's good. I really believe that this is a key conference and something is gonna be, be released corporately. Amen. Well, today, it is, uh, I do have a distinct uh, privilege and honor of introducing our speaker. But when uh, Dr. Sharon R uh, Richardson came to Life Center, it was 15 years ago. And she was just really precious then. She's precious now. She's highly educated. She's a doctor. Uh, she works at the CDC. And uh, she uh, has taken advantage in a good way of everything I believe that Life Center has offered. There was a time when, now, now I want to tell you, when I say something to you, you can take it or not. But you might want to pay attention sometimes. Because <laughs> I might be saying something that's real key to you, and it's kind of like it goes, and you, you got to get it though. She's real good at getting it. There was, there was a time when several were going uh, to, uh, to some place to get some training or something, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I just said to her, there's something at Life Center in your training, Sharon. That was all I said, I think. Is that about right? About it? That, that was here for her. Well, she just really dug in. She's, been, uh, she's taken advantage of the prophetic training She's able to actually lead, she could take over the prophetic uh, training, but that wasn't for her. Now, the, the prophesying was, but God had something different planned for her to take over and take other, raise others up, and that was the healing, the deliverance, and she has done such a magnificent, wonderful job at that. One day at the altar, I think we were kind of saying, does she need to do the prophetic training or does she need to take over the healing and deliverance? And something happened. And all I said to her was, that's you, Sharon. That was it. She heard God and, and she uh, availed herself to the, the uh, uh, training of the, the healing, del the deliverance. And we've seen and heard testimonies of hundreds of people who have been set free and delivered and lived victorious lives. Now her whole goal, her whole personal purpose ends with one word, victorious. She's victorious and she wants everybody else to be victorious. So we're honored today to have her as our speaker. I'm gonna ask you to come up, uh, Dr. Sharon. And I am so proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Elder Phil. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to ask you to remain standing if you don't mind. I had to get my tissues. 
when the Spirit of the Lord comes on me, I just do that. I'm not sad, I'm not hurt, I'm not crying, I'm full, and it overflows through my eyes. But what I want to do is, I just want to, we're already here in your presence, Father God. And I, I just thank you so much that this body of believers have come together in agreement to worship you first and foremost. And now, Lord, we're sitting at your table and we are opening our hearts up to you, God, that you would speak to our hearts concerning the more. Lord, we yield our ears, our eyes, all of the faculties of our natural man. We yield them to you, Holy Spirit. And we ask that the words that come forth, that are released, that they go in, Jerabaso and they uproot. Ooh, said I buy everything, everything that would hold us back from the promise that we individually have in you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Do you agree? Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Welcome to those who are joining us on live stream this morning. I will not forget you. And I ask you to be engaged with us just as we are here in the sanctuary. The first thing I'd like to do is to thank my leaders. Dr. Mary and Dr. Buddy Crumb. <laughs> we are a blessed people. And if you don't recognize it, just take it from someone who came to this house broken, bound, And here I am today, transformed. <laughs> I tell you, and I am yet being transformed because there is more. When I had to write out my biography or my resume or whatever you want to call it, and you run down this list of accomplishments, it is all because of what the Lord has done in me. But a large part of it was, as Dr. Mary said, having ears to hear it and then grab it and do something with it. Do something with it. I've been on this kick about mental ascent here lately because we hear so much revelation. We hear outstanding teaching. And if we're not careful, we'll do this and not do anything else with it. And so today, my assignment is building capacity for more. And that is going to be to move from that mental ascent into a place where we will take action individually. In him we live, breathe, move, we sang it over and over this morning. So it's not by might, it's not by power, it's not by anything other than the Spirit of God that lives on the inside of you. Amen. But the Lord is going to want to take what we declare every single Sunday morning. And I'll read it to you. We declare that we were made in the image and likeness of God to live in a Abundant life. So remember, abundant life. We choose to put on 
the mind of Christ. And we decree that we are filled, full, we're full of divine wisdom for what? For what? Oh yeah, I, I am an interactive person. I do like to hear back from you. It's okay, I know it's Sunday morning and we're in church, but come talk with me. Innovation, witty inventions, creative ideas. We free ourselves from every limitations. I don't know if we realize how powerful these words that we're decreeing and declaring are, but what we must do now is connect our faith with it, our knowing with it, that this is what's gonna manifest through me. And I'm saying it out of my mouth. I'm telling heaven and earth and myself. Because as I say it, I'm hearing it for myself. And it shifts me. So I free myself from every limitation that would keep me from bearing much fruit. I am a fruitful vine. Fruitful, a, 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 a lush garden. Fruitful, overflowing. Ooh, that's a, that's a nice place to be. We declare favor on our jobs. Favor on our jobs. Not murmuring and complaining and criticizing. We declare favor on our jobs. And that favor is gonna bring us promotions, advancements. Now be careful because promotions and advancement may mean more work. Okay? It's gonna require something of you. Divine increase. That means that God is going to increase us. God is going to do it. How? As we partner and co-labor and align with him. He's gonna give us the increase in our businesses. How about in our homes and with our families? And all of the resources that we are going to need, our banks, our bank accounts. My goodness, we have the Abundant Life Initiative here at the Life Center. How many are taking advantage of learning what it re is required to walk in that wealthy place? We have it right here in the house. So I'm gonna kind of push you a little bit in what I discuss with you today. Because everything that we need, the Lord has provided for us. His desire is for us to walk in the more. Now the more for me is one thing and the more for you is something else. Have you since we began declaring we are made for more? Have you decided? Have you heard? Have you listened to the Lord? But what is my more? You can take a moment and do it right now. Those of you who are online, you've got the advantage. Go on and get a piece of paper and a pen, because I like you know, for you to write and take notes and whatnot. But then ask the Lord, what is the more for me this year, 2019 and beyond, but for right now, April 2019, what is the more? Now, one of the things that I am going to do today is um, take us on a journey where we are dealing with things that will hinder us from the more. I recently learned about growth factors. Growth factors. And in science, these are um, chemicals, entities that are in the blood system, in the human body, that promote growth and increase. And when there is a wound, the 
healthcare physicians, they will go into that wound and they will dig out all of the debris, all of the infection, everything that is detrimental to that human body, to that limb, to wherever that wound is. They don't stop cleansing it out. They have a cleansing agent that they use. They get it all the way down to where it starts to bleed. That's when they know that it is cleaned out all the way. And what is released in that blood that's released? Nothing but growth factors. So once you get it all cleaned out, you're then in a position where that which is just going to naturally happen because of the blood, those growth factors are going to begin to function and operate in your life, right? And so that's what we're going to do today. And it's going to be that we're going to pray, we're going to decree, we're going to declare, we're going to repent, we're going to rejoice, we're going to laugh, we're going to cry, we're going to listen. Everything that is needing. So no, it's not a typical Sunday morning. I hate to bust your bubble. <laughs> I thank God that we are here as his workmanship. And Ephesians 2.10, it states clearly that for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto what? What kind of works? And, and that second word was works. I heard a long time ago, work, success is work, which means you're gonna have on overhauls, you're going to have on gloves and you're going to have on boots. It's going to require of us something. So just shifting our mind from give it to me, Lord, I'm here, I'm here, I'll take it all in to Lord, what is it that I am to do today to position me? What is it that's pulling me back? I was uh, in Hilton Head this past week, thank you Jesus, glory to God, and I got a chance to go to the beach. And when I turned the corner onto the seashore, there was this humongous rainbow from the horizon over the water all the way to the other side in the land, and it was thick. I could see the purple, I could see the green, I could see the colors so clear. And of course, naturally, I started walking towards the rainbow. And I thought it was just gonna be a beautiful walk on the beach. Honey, it was almost like as soon as I turned in the direction of the rainbow, the wind started blowing and the spray started coming to my glasses were filled with water and the sand was just you know turning up and it was a press for me to walk towards my promise you get it it was a press then i saw the rain cloud so i said okay let me turn around and go back you know and then the, and the wind was behind me behind me behind me and so, Lord, I just ask now in Jesus' name that the wind of the Spirit take each and every one of us into that place where we first of all see your promise, crystallize it for ourselves personally, not as an abstract concept, but give us a vision for the promise, for the more, that you have for us. And by your spirit, Lord, propel us forward after today, in Jesus' name. Yeah, so we got those good works which God hath before ordained. So it's something that you don't have to beg for it. All we have to do is inquire of the Lord and get in alignment with it. It's not something that we have to make happen. He already has it for us. So here's that list of declarations that we speak every single Sunday morning. Next Sunday, when we make this declaration, the expectation is 
that there will be faith and rigor and agreement with what it is that we are saying out of our mouths. Yes? yes. Amen. So what are some of the things that are going to hold us back from the more? And I'm going to talk about that a little bit this morning. Those things that restrict us, that snare us, that hinder us, that may even be a pothole that we've stepped into and need help getting out of. One of the things is, as is seen on the screen, what's in our heart. And you'll see there a list of items, wounds, hurts, vows, judgments, ungodly soul ties, word curses. Now this is in the arena that we in SHND work with individuals in. We work on ourselves first, and then we help individuals to recognize, I have been hurt back when I was five years old, and I'm still living my life out of the effect of something that happened way back then. Lord Jesus, look, I need to give that to you and let you and I walk through healing and deliverance in those areas. I repent for every job judgment or vow that I made against my mom and my dad because I know according to your word that if I dishonor my parents it's not going to go well with me so reveal to me truth Lord God so that I can walk free of these things so I can move forward into the more so what we're going to be doing today are prayers and I'm endeavored to put them up on the screen so that we can pray them as a corporate body. But there will be times when I'll say, wait, because there's something that the Lord wants to do in that prayer. Okay? Yes? Wonderful. So here we have this very first one, and we're going to make it personal. And I thank you for you who are on uh, live stream that you're able to see this as well. Are we ready? Now this is about our heart. This is about those the areas of our lives that we really, you know, we just go on and we do what we do and we react the way we react without giving it a second thought. But remember, we're, this is the cleansing agent. We're going in. And we're going to clean out everything that the Lord reveals to us today. All right? If you are ready, let's begin in unison. I ask you, God, to break off of me the consequences of vows, judgments, ungodly soul ties, negative words and curses that others and I have pronounced over my life. Hold it. Lord, I ask you to break it off of me. There are consequences to every time that I have made a vow that I am not. Break that off of me now. And as you are sitting there listening and praying this prayer, allow the Spirit of God to reveal to you that which is holding you back so that when we say break, you break it. Every word that I've said about myself, what are you saying to yourself about yourself? I break it. I break it. Break it in Jesus' name. Let's continue. I break all agreements with negative thinking and the lies of the enemy, and I choose to walk in truth. What is truth? What is truth? Tell me, what is truth? Talk to me. It's the word. It's the word of God. Yeah, it is the logos, absolutely. What about the rhema? What has he said to you lately? What, has he, what did he say to you during praise and worship this morning? 
What did he say to you when you got up this morning at three o'clock in the morning, when you went to bed last night? The voice of the Lord is true. His word coming forth to you in the intimate places where it opens up revelation, it opens up vision, it opens up dreams, it opens up possibilities. Who, me, Lord? Yes, you. Okay, help my unbelief, huh? Amen. <laughs> One of the things also are how we think about ourselves. Remember, we're cleaning these, these things out. How do I think? What am I thinking from day to day? Do you know you do think? There's never a moment when you're not thinking. Do you realize that? Yes. So what's coming, what's, what's the stream? What's flowing through my mind? What's happening there? Are there thoughts of good, lovely, praiseworthy, virtuous, critical, judgmental, fearful, anxious? So Lord, even as you've done it with me, I pray that you open up for your people a sensitivity to their thought life. Just open that up, Lord God, to them, that they can begin to hear and discern your voice, their voice, and the voice of the enemy. There are familiar spirits that were assigned to you while you were in your mother's womb. And when you came out of your mother's womb, they knew your generational history, they seen your history, and they know exactly what to say to get you to pull back, to stop, to turn inward in self-pity and depression. Oh, poor me, oh my. But then there is the word of the Lord, hallelujah, that brings light where there's darkness. Oh, Jesus, let your light shine. Let it penetrate the darkness in the minds of your people. Let your word become so, let them become so enamored, so in love with your word that it truly transforms their mind. Little by little. We have to be patient with ourselves, kind to ourselves, long suffering with ourselves. As the Lord begins to reveal to us what's in our heart, the first thing we want to do is say, Not so. That's not me. That's them. That's not me. I'll project that over there. And we don't look at it. So we run and we escape into video games, into movies, into talking on the phone, into this, that, and the other, other than allowing that internal work to be done. I know this isn't a hoop de hoop message, but it is what is required. It is so necessary for us to move forward. We must look at ourselves. We must be willing to present ourselves as a living sacrifice before the Lord to allow him to just do what you do in me, Jesus, because I know you love me so much you're not going to harm me. And if it's an adverse situation, I know I trust you that you're gonna see me through to the other side and I'm gonna be the better for it. More of you, Jesus, will shine through me. See, that's the other thing. We have this romantic idea of what the life in Christ is all about. 
but it is truly allowing our flesh, our soul, our mind, will, emotions to become subject to the spirit. We live so much of our lives out of our natural man. And the Lord in this day, in this era, he is teaching us. I said in my word that you're seated in heavenly places. You're seated in heavenly places by the spirit. So live in the spirit. Learn how to live in the spirit so that you won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Okay, let's continue on. And here we have a prayer that I'd also like for us to pray together. If we are ready, we're going to do it in unison and begin. I repent for limiting you, Father, and all that you desire to do through me in my life. I repent for rejecting your dreams as being too grandiose. And let's stop for a moment. What do we mean when we say repent? Talk to me. Turn the other way, change of heart. Who said that? Give up self, something about the way you think. Say it again. Change the way you think. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. And one of the things that the Lord said to me, and it's in one of the slides coming up, but it's like, Sharon, change the way you think and it will change your behavior. So change the way I think is what we mean by repent. Because when I repent, I am turning in the other direction. Because as I'm thinking this way, I'm thinking this way, I'm thinking this way, I repent. I'm thinking this way, I'm thinking this way. I'm, uh, there's the rainbow. But I'm still thinking this way. The promise is always on me, over me, and around me and moving through me as I move forward in him. Let's continue with this prayer. Lord, reawaken your vision and dream in me that you have called me to partake in before the foundation of the earth. I choose to call into being that which is not and to partner with you in creation, declaring your purposes and will. Okay, I declare. What do I declare? What do you declare? Talk to me. Say it. Somebody stand up with boldness and declare something. Come on. Amen. Someone else. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Let's get in the flow. Come on. I love it. I love it. Everything that is written in the scroll of me in heaven, I will fulfill it. Woo! We say so, mommy. <laughs> Amen. And what's in your mouth? That's right. So that's another part of your cleaning this thing out. Okay? Amen. Oh, my goodness, my gracious. So this is another thing that will hinder us from the more. And it's interesting that everything centers around how we think. Wow, you notice that? But the orphan lifestyle, you see there the definition is not knowing the Father's will, his plan, his purpose, and 
who you are in him. Who you are. Who are you in him? Those, those plans and those purposes have you in there. You know that, right? And this whole thing about the more is, okay, there's more. You got more for me, okay? All right, well, you know what? I've not really been aiming at anything. I've just been in survival mode, trying to pay my bills and, and raise my children and, you know, get a date and, and buy some clothes and get that house. So I gotta get my mind in, in alignment. You know, I, I guess cars nowadays still get out of alignment, right? So if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm driving, I'm on 285, and I got the two lines to, to ride in, and I get out of alignment, and my car is out of alignment, I'm gonna shift to the left. I'm gonna shift to the right. But I am an arrow in the hand of the Lord. Straight on, straight on, straight on. I say, I am, you are. Take this personal. Yes? Amen. That's who you are. So not knowing who you are. And so let me just pray this before we pray that. Father, thank you. It's a discovery and it's a journey. And for those who have been so distracted by the cares of this life, I ask for you, by your grace, by your spirit, by your power, by your love for them, that you would begin to really work that work of identity in them. Yes, God, let them know that is not who you are. That is not what I called you to be. That is not who you are. This is who I've called you to be. And shift them, align them aright, Lord God, in their thinking. Lord, let it be as we are to bring into subjection every thought to the obedience, to the obedience, to the obedience of Christ. Help us to have our thought life in alignment and obedience with you. Okay, let's pray this prayer. Lord, I repent for finding my identity in who others say that I am, rather than in who you say that I am. Am I on the wrong page? Oh. <laughs> no? Well, just repeat after me, okay? because that's the second part of the prayer. So repeat after me. Lord, I repent for finding my identity in who others say that I am rather than in who you say that I am. Lord, remove all false identity that the enemy has planted in me and that I have come in agreement with in regard to who you say that I am. Now you can join me. I repent for seeking man's approval over your approval and trying to build my kingdom instead of your kingdom. Whoa. That's a serious, whoa. Because in our education, in the way we were created, we can do what we do and be who we be and we'll be just fine. We can be in the midst of church, doing, being, working, progressing, successful, and on the outside, 
they got it going on. The Lord has blessed them. And they are doing it well. But God has in a book in heaven, according to Psalms 139, a book written with his plans and purposes. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to do what it is that the master has called me to do. I, 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 can, do, I can do a lot. I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And I can do a lot. But my God, please, let it be what you've ordained. Take my gifts, take my talents, take my abilities, and have your way with them. Not my will, but yours be done. How many times has Jesus, was Jesus tempted or given the opportunity to do it his way, the temptation in the desert, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane? He had the opportunity to do it another way. But he chose to do it the Lord's way. So that's another thing to do an assessment. Okay, everything that I'm doing, God, is it you? Or is it me? And if it is, what do we do? Repent. That's what John the Baptist was saying. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Okay, so where are we? I repent for not keeping my eyes on you, but looking to myself. Lord, I ask you to remove pride, selfishness, insecurity, rejection, and fear so that I can love you and your children wholeheartedly. Lord, Break my heart with that which breaks your heart. Remove the heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh. Amen? Yes, indeed, amen. Yes, so thank you, Father. We're going to just keep on with the keep on then. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Uh, let me go back for a minute, minute, because again, I don't know why it's, it, it's coming out this way, but I used to say, I am what I am by the grace of God, and that's enough. That sounds good, don't it? <laughs> I am what I am by the grace of God, and that's enough. The problem with that, and I didn't know it at the time, I mean, that's what I believed. And I still do believe that I am what I am by the grace of God, but that's not enough because there's more. So without even realizing it, I put a limitation on me. This is it and no more. Yeah, I got a bean patch and I'm taking real good care of my bean patch. I am what I am, by the grace of God. He's done it in me, and that's enough. God is saying, look out, there's more. <laughs> oh my Lord, who, me? Yes, you. But it don't matter, I'm, doing, I'm going to do it through you. So I've had to shift my thinking I am what I am by the grace of God. Thank you, Lord. But I know there's more. So just that little tweak. Or listen to this. I can do all things. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> and that is that statement is found in truth. But listen to this. Can I do all things? What does that sound like? Doubt, limitation, unbelief. How can I do all things? It's 
Say it again. Knowing God's purpose for me. That's right, and doing that which he instructs me to do. How can I, how can I do all things? No, listen. Listen, there's a sensitivity to recognizing what we are thinking. How can I do all things? Through aligning myself with the will and plan and purpose for God, that God has for my life. How can I do all things? That's fear, intimidation, and limitation. I just want you to get it that how we are looking at what's before us, the same conversation that we have within ourselves. I can repeat, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's the word of God and it's true and I stand on it and there's no more to be said about it. Then I'm in the kitchen washing the dishes. Lord, how can I, how can I do that? Oh, it, it came from the, the general to the specific. How can I do that? Or I could ask the question, Lord, how can I do that? And it's an inquiry of the Lord, and you're having that conversation back and forth with him, and he's saying, you can do this, you can do that, you can wait, you can go. Or it can be, period, how can I do that? Again, this is an internal work. I'm not talking about what happens outside, what we do externally. I'm talking about what's in our heart, what's in our heart that the Lord wants to clean out. Amen? Okay, I know. <laughs> so change what you think, change your behavior. Uh, let's just go ahead and, and pray this prayer. Oh, that's, a, that's not the one I want. Yes. So here we go. Reveal my blind self to me. And I pray, God, that that was demonstrated with those questions and those statements. I pray that that's what transpired. Ready, begin. Show me the hidden motives of my heart. I stand in the light of your truth. Show me the seeds of offense and sin that have taken root in my heart. I commit myself to forgive and release all offenses in my life and my generational line by your grace. Amen. You know, I didn't go into so much detail in terms of the nature of the thoughts and where they come from because that's for another day and another discussion. But forgiveness and offense are so key in our walking free. And I'm going to move past that because I think that I've given enough examples of how you can think twisted and how you can think godly. You know, like, I'm a victim. Yeah, I lost my job, and I can't find the kind of job that I want, and I'm just a victim of these circumstances, and there's nothing I can do about it. Or, Christ in me is my hope, and I will hold fast to that hope and expectation that where I am today is not going to be where I'm going to be tomorrow. And I will take today and the grace and the mercy that's given to me today. And I will fulfill for today that which is required, knowing that I am not alone. I'm not in this by myself. God holds my hand. He's directing my steps. The favor of God that I've been declaring every Sunday and every day and every night is upon me. I have wisdom. I have the abilities and the gifts and the talents. I just need them unpacked. God, you're doing a work in me. You're moving me out of an old season into a new season and it's going to require new skills. 
So I submit myself to the process. I change the way I think about it. Amen? Amen. 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 So what is looking, what is holding back your capacity for the more is the question. Here are some areas that you could ask the Lord. What's working? What's working? Poop, 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 I can rattle them off. But what's not working? Those are the things that I really need your help with, God. I need your grace, I need your mercy, I need your empowerment. What's not working? Honest with yourself. You ain't gotta tell nobody. I won't tell if you won't tell, but I sure am gonna talk to him about it. And if I do need to tell someone, I'm going to find that trusted someone and we're going to counsel together with the Lord. Yes, there is benefit to being in the body and being aligned. Oh, oh, rebellion. Oh, my goodness. Let me get on over there then. Uh, okay. So I'm jumping, 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 jumping over so much. I always do this, <laughs> but it's okay. Because I want us in the next 10 minutes to address some strongholds that the Lord has brought forward for us to deal with today, but, and we're gonna start with a prayer of repentance over all of it. And then my, my belief is, is that as we begin to pray these last prayers, that there is going to be a release of deliverance and a release of healing that will come, all right? So come, one last prayer. No, it's not, I just lied. <laughs> Sorry. Lord. I choose to surrender to your will. I declare that I come in absolute surrender to your ultimate lordship of my whole being, surrendering my whole heart. I renounce and repent for myself and my ancestors for being afraid of man and evil and a succumbing to fear of man, which is a snare. Hold it, hold it, hold it. The fear of man. Can you imagine being riding on 285 and you having to get over because there's a car fire and the person wouldn't let you over, and they blew their horn, but they let you in. And after they got, we got past the car fire, they pulled out a gun. Wow! But I am not afraid of man. It has to be that serious. The fear of man is that serious. If you can imagine that, that's what the fear of man will do to you. It'll cause you to run in the opposite direction for where God would have you to be. Fear of man, it's a snare. All right, let's get back on this. The pride of life, the lust of the eye, and the lust of the flesh, which empower hardness of my heart and produce fear, doubt, and unbelief. Having a heart that has grown fat with spiritual plaque. Whoa, wait a minute. Okay, God, I got you. We, we're dealing with spiritual plaque today. You're digging it out. And we thank you for it. 
All right, let's keep going. I repent for hard-heartedness and allowing my heart to grow dull, my ears to become hard of hearing, and my eyes unable to see. I repent and renounce for myself and for all those in my family line who hardened their hearts to the voice of God and said, God doesn't hear. He doesn't see. He doesn't care about our situations. I repent for that even now, Lord God. We ask for your forgiveness, Lord God. I ask now in the name of Jesus that you would just go in, Lord God, to every heart, every heart, Lord God, and clear out the spiritual plaque. Remove the unforgiveness, Lord God. Remove the bitterness, Father God. Remove every judgment that have made against others and against themselves. I ask, Father God, that you would set in alignment and aright those hearts, God, that have been off-center. Lord, I ask that you would show yourself strong on their behalf. Manifest for them personally just who you are, what you say, and that you see them. You, I, I see you. I see you. Always, my thoughts are towards you, and they are thoughts of peace. Be still in the midst of your circumstance. Hear from me and what I would say about the matter. My voice is clear, my voice is strong. Remove all doubt and unbelief that I do not care because I love you with an everlasting love. It is eternal. It will never fail. Never give up on me. I am for you. I pat you on your back and I say, that is a good boy, good girl. I say, you are mine. And I have plans that I am shifting you into in this era. No longer will you have to depend on your power. No longer, all I ask my son, all I ask my daughter, come to me. There's an old song all what needless cares we bear because we haven't taken it to God. Let's take it to him. Every moment of every day, he never leaves us. He's with us all the time. That's the thing we don't get. He is Jehovah Shammah. He is with us all the time. There is never a moment where you are alone. Get, you got your mind as well. Get it. You are never alone. See, we don't recognize reality. All we see is this natural where, world where our five senses dictate what we live out of. But there is the spirit world. There's the nano world. There are all these dimensions and realms that are just as real as what we can contact right here. But that's another story. My point is, he's in us. And he doesn't vacate, he doesn't come and go. He doesn't. We come and go. All right, thank you, Mario. We're going to move on to these prayers that I was talking about. 
And so I thank you, Lord, that when we're talking about the more, there are some devices that the enemy would use to hold us back. And so we're just going to declare and decree and pray and repent and address barrenness. I need you to stand. And this is in accordance to Numbers 6, 24 through 26. And it says, let's say it together. I confess that I am blessed. I am designed to multiply and be fruitful in every area of my life. I walk in the blessing of multiplication. My finances are fruitful. My mind is fruitful. My family is fruitful. My ministry is fruitful. My life is fruitful. I walk in the blessings of the God of Abraham. I break the spirit of barrenness off my life. I break the spirit of barrenness off my life. Break it. I break the spirit of barrenness off of my life, off of your mind. I break the spirit of barrenness off of my life. I command all barrenness to go from my mind, go from my emotions, go from my that multiplies and increases. Let's deal with condemnation. Ah, I receive my full adoption and inheritance as a child of God. I am not condemned. I will not partner with a condemning spirit. My Bible says that I am accepted in the beloved, my mind, you are accepted, mind, hold on, mind, mind, you are accepted, so quit entertaining rejection and condemnation, I cast those thoughts down, I break condemnation and command go from me in Jesus name and this is in accordance to Romans 8 and 1 where it says that there therefore now is now is no condemnation to those who are where amen I'm glad I got a little bit of agreement there hallelujah this is another thing that keeps us from the more what is it uh-huh. So let's deal with it. Ready? Begin. God has not given me a spirit of fear. He has given me a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. I cast out the spirit of fear and every type of fear. I command fear to flee from me now.
and we say to fear that we will step over the thresholds that the Lord presents to us. Every opportunity, open door that the Lord provides for me, I shall walk in it. Say that. Lord, give me an opportunity. Prove me now here in this and see if I don't choose to obey you. I will obey. I will not allow fear to stop me from moving forward. In Jesus' name. Here's another one. Let's say it. I walk by faith and not by sight. All right, remember, I told you the five physical senses is not how we conduct our lives. We live our lives by faith in the Son of God. So I walk by faith and not by sight. I believe the word of God. I am firm, fixed, and steadfast in the promises of God. Woo, you need to let that get in you. I am firm, fixed, steadfast in the promises of God. If you don't know that you are firm, fixed, and steadfast, take it in. There's an anointing there to receive strength, the spirit of might, firm, fixed, and steadfast, resolved. Yes, God, receive that, receive that, solidifying you on the inside. Thank you for might, God. Thank you for that firmness, fixed. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, you are our rock. <laughs> and you live on the inside of us. Ooh, and I am firm. I am firm. I am steadfast. All right, I kind of got carried away. Let's start that statement again. I am firm, fixed, and steadfast in the promises of God. I say that every promise over my life is is what? Yes. It is what? Yes. Glory to God. I bind every hindering spirit of doubt and unbelief and I command doubt to leave me now. In Jesus' name, I cast you out. I choose to believe God. I worship you, Jesus, because you you are my deliverer. You are my healer. I rest in you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Unbelief. Lord, I worship you as the God of miracles. Nothing is impossible for you. I believe your word. I believe your promises. For faith arising in every area of life. You said that all things are possible to him that believe. I say that I am a believer and not a doubter. I worship you, Jesus, as my healer, deliverer, my provider. And I command unbelief to go down in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Rebellion. Yeah. Because we're going to be a people who obey God, aren't we? We're going to hear him say, step through that the door. And fear is going to say, no, you can't. I'm going to say, oh, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Can. Ready? And begin. I break and bind every religious spirit thought and tendency in my life. 
I cast down vain imaginations and command my mind to line up with the Word of God. I love the Word and the ways of God. I am fully submitted to the will of my Father. Spirit of rebellion, you go from me now in Jesus' name. I cast you out and I command your power to be broken over my life in Jesus' name. Rebellion, go. Leave me now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Last one. No matter what the circumstances are, you are more than a conqueror. You are victorious through me who loves you. You are not a victim. You are a victor. And we believe the Lord to manifest that victory as we walk in obedience to him. Ready and begin. I refuse to remain a victim. The power of the devil is defeated in my life. In Jesus' name, every wound, offense, act of abuse and pain has to bow to the name of Jesus. I confess that I am in Jesus and all things in my life are made new. I confess that I am free. I confess that I am So, Father, even as the wounds have been cleaned out, the plaque has been removed spiritually from our souls. Lord God, I ask for those growth factors of your spirit to be released. I ask for the spirit of counsel, knowledge, fear of the Lord, wisdom, spirit of might. Hallelujah. Lord, give your people that which they need to step into the more. Ah! Step into the, the more. Step into the new, too. Some of you, it's new. Hear that? Some of you, it's new. You've not gone that way before. And it's okay. God's got your back. He's got your hand. He's gone before you. And it's okay. Those of you who are online, you have been right here in the midst of all that the Lord has done this morning. You have made your declarations and your confessions. And your prayers have been heard in heaven. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this honor. I thank you. And I bless your name. That you would be glorified in each and every one of our lives. Because that's the whole matter of it all. That you receive glory. That your name be proclaimed and demonstrated and shed abroad to all the earth through your people. I close now and I bless you. Thank you for the honor to speak to you this morning. I took more time than I should have. But I had to get through what I had to get through. Bless you. Thank you, Apostle Buddy and Dr. Mary. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just think 
Elder Sharon for allowing God to use her. We bless you and honor you. So here we've reached a moment where the Spirit of God, the man Christ Jesus, is calling us into himself, calling us into a place of victory that we can only receive through him. And for some who may be online or somebody in here, you may have prayed these prayers for the first time. Come into this new victory for the first time and you feel God tugging on your heart and you wonder who is this? What is this authority that um, you all are talking about? How do I come into further knowledge of this word? This word that you say that I have access into, that word is Jesus. And at this moment in time, he wants to bring you into a place of salvation and intimacy that only he can give you. So if you are one who wants to take that next step in intimacy and relationship with God and living a victorious life, this is an opportunity where we as a family are all going to pray together. And we are going to believe that the man Christ Jesus is meeting you where you are at and he's entering into your heart. So if you all will repeat after me and say, Father, I recognize that I have not always yielded to your ways. I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. And right here I am in need of a savior. And I recognize that Jesus is your son and I accept him into my life as Lord of my heart and Lord of my mind and I accept your Holy Spirit into my life that I will be able to walk the path of righteousness and holiness that is only found in Christ Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time and you're joining us here online, send us an email at salvation at lifecenter.org. We want to make sure that we can be accountable to the work that God seeks to do in your life and helping you to walk out the continual pathway of victory that he has for you. Or maybe you're one who is here in the service and you prayed that prayer for the first time. Our very own um, Pastor Samuel Giles or Lacan, as we have Pastor Daryl Baker, who is going to take you into the back to give you some more information on how you can walk out the rest of this life that God has for you in the capacity that it's made you for. Um, so is there anyone? If you could just raise your hand and gather your belongings and Pastor Daryl will meet you over in the backside over here. All right, amen. So also we here at Life Center believe in equipping and empowering the saints and today's message was talking about building the capacity for more. And one of the things that as we are doing more and coming into the knowledge of God's will and destiny for our lives, he wants to make sure that we have the wisdom, make sure that we have the knowledge and the wherewithal to be able to take those steps. So if you are looking for a church home where you can grow and expand and be cultivated into the fullness that God has for you, we ask that um, you would gather your belongings at the conclusion of service, and we will have one of our new members' representatives to take you over to the side. So this is Sister Margot, and at the conclusion of service, you can meet her over here, and she will guide you to the Welcome Center. All right? For our first-time visitors, um, there was a visitor's card in the seat pocket in front of you. That was your access into the Welcome Center. We have some of our leadership team who just want to personally greet you and thank you for coming to um, worship with us and encounter God today. And so at the conclusion of service, you can meet them, a new members rep at the double doors to my left, and they will escort you to the Welcome Center. Um, for those who are in need of prayer or looking for um, 
just somebody to partner with you in a request or petition that you have for God, we will have our altar ministers to come up to the front and they will be able to um, partner and intercede with you. And so now I'm gonna ask that we would all please stand and we're going to close out the service. As a quick note, we want to remind you that you can get a copy of today's message at the bookstore and the book, there are bookmarks in the seat pocket in front of you. We ask that you take that. That will keep you updated on everything that we have going on here at the Life Center. We ask that you don't forget to pick up your children. Um, we, they are very precious to us, but we know that they are even more precious to you. So we want you to take them home with you. <laughs> Um, and also, we just ask that you keep in mind that the sanctuary will be closing 30 minutes after. So we just ask that if you would please be mindful and respectful of the atmosphere that has been set as the altar ministers continue to minister and allow for God's work to be brought to completion um, for today. And so, um, that's all. so let us pray. Um, Father, we just thank you for this way where you have allowed us to encounter your presence. God, we do not take lightly this encounter. And so we raise up our expectation that everything that we sought coming into this place, we will receive and see the tangible evidence in our lives. Father, we thank you that we will leave this place changed, having received greater depth of wisdom and understanding, and also wisdom and knowledge that you have indeed built a capacity within us to be made for more. So God, we receive and we take hold and attain every blessing, every promise that you have for us. And we thank you that you build within us the boldness and courageousness to be able to walk out that victory and the authority that you have given us over everything that the enemy would try to bring to dissuade us in our lives. And so Father, we just thank you that you cover every member until we come and meet again. And it's in Jesus Christ's precious name we pray. Amen.